Hi, I'm Maggie Sparkman. I'm working on Project Crescent for SQL Server codename Denali Community Technical Preview 3, CTP3, and I'm here to talk about ways to get the most out of Project Crescent. Here are some of the things we're going to talk about. The design environment, some of the different visualizations you can use, converting a table to various visualizations, why the icons are disabled sometimes, creating a chart with a series, creating bubble charts, filtering or highlighting slicers or filters, tiles and small multiples. Here is design view for Project Crescent. First, this is the canvas, this whole area here. This is the ribbon. This column is the field list. The top half is the field section. These fields are in the model that your report is based on. And the layout section shows which fields you are using in the visualization that you've selected. In this case, small multiples. You can see the little blue bars show me which visualization is selected. These little icons here, this little icon next to name, this is the label icon, and we see an example of that over here in this card. Apple is from the name, is a value in the name field. These are measures marked by the sigma symbol. This is the filters area here, which I opened by clicking the filters button. This little icon here, the pop-out icon, when I click it, then this small multiples would take up the whole design surface. Or if I were in presentation mode, it would take up the whole screen. And speaking of presentation mode, here's the preview button. That would, the report will fill this whole area and we won't be able to see the ribbon or the field list. And then in full screen presentation mode, it would take up the whole screen just like in PowerPoint. And here's the link to help online. Here are some of the visualizations you can use in Crescent. First, here's the chart tools contextual tab. When you have a visualization selected, you see these tools, either design or layout tab. This is called a tile container. And this is the navigation to navigate through the different tiles. There's one tile for each of the different foods. And on the tile, we see there's a card with the values for this particular, for Apple. And so the card is filtered for Apple and this line chart also showing the value for Apple. This is a slicer. It's like the slicers to in Excel somewhat, although and I'm using it with an image. So if I clicked this button, I would filter the report for beverages. Up here we have two, a, a bar and a column chart, and the one of them is filtering and highlighting the rest of the report because I have clicked the fruits bar. So over here, you can see we're seeing the part of each of these columns that is a fruit for each color. Here is a bubble chart. We're only seeing the fruit bubble because it is being filtered by this bar up here. And it has a tracer showing its pattern over time. You can see the watermark back here. We're looking at June. And the, sure enough, it's here it is in June. And this is the play access. And this is a small multiples, a collection of small multiples. And again, the layout section is showing the fields that are in the small multiples. Every visualization starts as a table. So I've put these different columns in my table. And first off, I'm just going to convert it to a matrix. Here's the matrix. It now has groups and it has a total for each group. Now I'm going to convert the table to a card. 
I had to drop down to get the uh, visualizations gallery, get the card at the bottom of the visualizations gallery, and you notice that corn is up here in the blue bar. It's one of the values in the name field. Even though name is actually the second column, it gets top billing because it was identified as the representative column. And you notice the uh, the image here is also displayed nicely because it is the representative image. Both of these were identified in the model and so they're displayed well in Crescent as a result. You can also display a key metric. Here we have a little table that just has one a sum for the whole report in it and if I click card then we get it displayed in a nice little card. Sometimes some of the icons are disabled. Why? Well, let's start with a table that only has one column in it. It doesn't have any measures, and so all of the charts are disabled. But a slicer is not, so we create a slicer. And we could click one of these coffee, say, and we'd filter the whole report for coffee. Now, the table has one measure in it, and all the charts are enabled. So I'll make a column chart with one column for each of the items in the name field. Or I could make a scatter chart. It doesn't look like much with only one measure. Here I'll make a series chart. Also, all the charts are enabled. So here I have my bar chart now has a series in it. It shows which ones are served as is, or cold, or hot. And now I have two measures, and all of the charts are disabled except the scatter chart. Uh, that's a more interesting scatter chart, because it now has two values on the two axes. And if I have three measures, now the bubble size is controlled by that third measure. If I add a series to a chart, here's before, this is just the total for each month, and now it's showing the total, the bars are this, uh, the columns are the same height, but each column shows what part of it was beverages, breads, etc. just by adding the category field to the series box. You could make three column charts, each having one measure, or you could create one bubble chart that contains all three measures in one chart. You can add data labels here on the chart tools contextual menu the Layout tab, Data Labels. This is comparing, you could create a slicer that would show different months for, you could click through the different months and see the values on this bubble chart. It would also be uh, filtering the whole rest of the report at the same time. Or you could add a play axis to your bubble chart and now if you click the play button you will see the values per month. You notice the watermark again it says December and sure enough we're in the December section. Let's talk about the difference between filtering and highlighting. A slicer filters, filters everything on the report. So I have no slicer selected, I have no filter. I have all the values in the cards, I have three values in the column chart, and six in the bar chart. If I click the vegetables button in the slicer, I am filtering all the cards and I'm filtering the column and the bar chart. But if I instead click one of the bars in the bar chart, say yellow, I now I'm still filtering the cards. I'm not doing anything to the slicer, but over here in the column chart it's 
kind of interesting. I'm showing the part of each of these as is cold and hot that is served that is yellow. So you can use slicers, put them right on your report, and you can click the different values and they interact. Or you can show the filters area and you could add filters for each of the same things that I have slicers for. In this case, here's servings, I get a slider instead of the individual values. For name, I now, with the advanced filter, I can do things like starts with or does not include. So now I'm filtering for everything that starts with C. And I get a calendar for the dates. So this is the tiles container and I want to show you a couple different things about it. One is that you can use different fields to tile by. In this case I have this tiles container that contains this bubble chart and it contains these cards and I'm using a text field categories to filter these visualizations. And I'm using the tab strip tiles visualization. It goes across the top here I'm using a different field. I'm using the category drawing field which has, which has an image in it. I'm still using the tab strip so it's across the top. And here I'm back to the text field category but I'm using the cover flow visualization which is across the bottom. It shows a different panel for each value. Or I could use the back to the image field, the category drawing field, and I could still use the cover flow. So now I see the images in the cover flow. And as I click through the values, the values in my bubble chart and cards change. Small, small multiples are interesting. You can have, um, here's an example of a tile that has uh, one chart and as I click through the tile I see still one chart but it's changing with the values for each item in, in this case in the picture field. A slicer, I'm still seeing just one chart but I can add things from multiple different values added together but there still just be one chart and of course it's filtering all the rest of the report at the same time. Or I can create small multiples and here I can see several different charts at the same time so I can compare and contrast just by adding name to the vertical multiples box. And I can set the number of charts that I want to show across and down. In this case I've chose, chosen three across and two down. Thanks for watching and for more information you can go to the Project Crescent Overview page. Lots more information there. Thanks again.